Hi, and welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'm Lisa Pavelka, and what I'm going to show you today is one of my favorite techniques of all time. It's incredibly versatile, but we only have time to just scratch the proverbial surface. But I think you're really going to like what you can do with the technique that I call the set and slice. So it all begins with one of my texture stamps. And in my texture stamps, I designed them with a set and slice and several other uh, prevalent polymer clay techniques in mind. But you need a lot of depth and you need a lot of detail in order for it to work. And we're working with the new Fimo Professional Clay, which is based on a pure color pigment system. And it's incredible and it comes with all kinds of foolproof recipes for different custom colors that you can easily blend. And it also comes with reclosable packaging. Very cool. Now, the colors you want to use can range from very simple, which is what I'm going to start showing you now. And you want to precondition your clay, knead it by hand, or run it through the pasta machine until it's soft and pliable. You also want to work with your lightest colors first. Now, I'm going to share with you a lot of tips and tricks for doing a set and slice easily and well. When I first developed this technique many, many years ago, it it didn't work as easy as it does now, and it's gone through several evolutions until I've found the perfect improvements that make it almost foolproof. So the stamp should be clean and dry to start. So if you use inks or powders, make sure you clean it between use. And with your clay, you want to work with small amounts at a time. You may be tempted to work with bigger pieces, but trust me, it's not going to work well, and you're just going to be going back over and over again to patch. So a pea size amount of clay and we want a clay blade that's flexible. Yours is going to come with this handle. It's not really a handle, it's actually a cover. You want to remove that. So with a blade that's got a fair degree of flex and after we press it down into a clean dry stamp, we don't want release agent, hold the blade with your hand, um, with your non-dominant hand, and then pivot and push it down against the rubber. No, you're not going to cut these stamps with the blade, even though the blades are very, very sharp. And you continue to press small amounts of clay into the cavities and shave or slice. So you might be a little curious, why the Sutton slice? Well, a friend of mine by the name of Pete Sutton was trying to do another technique I had taught him that requires the use of a texture stamp. And what happened was it sounded like it would work on paper, but in execution it didn't come out at all. But what he was left with was a mucked up stamp, just gummed up with embedded clay. And in telling him how to clean it out, I discovered that there was a very cool pattern effect happening. The trick was how to find a way to get consistency and be able to remove that pattern in one piece. And voila, that was the birth of this technique. So I'm not going to do enough to cover a tin, and that's our project for today. You can do jewelry and home decor and all kinds of accessories using the set and slice. And it doesn't have to be done with my paisley stamp here. You can try any of the stamps that Fire Mountain Gems and Beads carries. So we're just slicing and slicing. Now, some people, when I teach the technique, they find they have a different way they like to hold the blade. And I'm just going to show you what works for some people. The first few times you do it, it's going to feel awkward. I'm not going to kid you about that. But once you start doing it, it becomes very intuitive and kind of zen-like. So you'll get good at it real quick. It just takes a little practice. Some people bow their blade and being very careful because these blades are incredibly sharp. They hold their stamp steady and they bow it from both ends and slice like that. That's not the way I prefer to do it, but I encourage you to try both methods. Whatever works for you is the right way, as long as you do it safely. So you would just continue uh, with the same color until you fill the area that you like, okay? And um, a couple things you're going to need to check for. First thing I'm going to look for is, do I have any holes? Is anything missing? And it's not uncommon for you to pick up some of the clay and, and for it to come out of the holes, especially the real tiny detail areas. If that happens and it continues to happen, a couple of things you want to know. One of them might be that your blade isn't clean and you're picking it up, it's creating drag and you're lifting that clay up. The other thing is that you might want to slice it from a different direction if you're still struggling to fill a hole. And when you get down to the bottom and you fill the area you like, you also want to, um, you also want to slice it very firmly 
to make sure that you get all of the clay off the surface of the rubber. That's key. If you leave any of that clay on the surface of the rubber, it's going to really uh, distort the effect. So look at how I'm shaving. And if you find you have to go back and fill a little area, like that little area there, the smaller amount of clay that you use, the easier it is to patch it and slice it without lifting it back out. So now we're going to clean up. The first thing I want to do, shh, don't tell my husband, I'm going to do a little housekeeping. I'm going to pick up all these little bits of clay that happen when you slice. It's really important that this area is very clean before we go to our next step. It's not uncommon to take the base layer that you're going to use, and these have a way of finding their way onto it if you don't clean them up, and that's going to also distort the effect. So now I'm going over the stamp and I'm very aggressively shaving it. I'm putting pressure down and you can turn it and move it from different directions if it makes it easier. And you see that clay that's coming up on my blade? Some of that's coming off the surface of the rubber, but some of it I'm actually pushing so aggressively down into the rubber that I'm slicing just under the surface. That's okay, it's not gonna matter on the effect but it's just so imperative that you don't have any clay sitting on the surface of the rubber. So take your time and check it well. Go back and make sure you don't have any of these little whatchamacallits laying around loose on your stamp or loose on your work area. And then you're going to take your background layer of clay. Now the background layer of clay can be a solid color, usually something with contrast, and you want to work on a nonstick surface like this Teflon sheeting that's designed for work with metal clay, but it's oh so handy for polymer too. The sheet needs to be smooth and flat, and because I'm using it on a tin, I rolled it out on my pasta machine on a pretty thin setting. It doesn't need to be really thick, it's going to be strong. Fimo Professional is an incredibly strong clay all by itself when it's properly baked for the right amount of time and the right temperature. But the tin itself is going to support this and give a lot of strength to it. So now what I'm doing is, I like to call this my happy finger dance. I'm tamping that base layer of clay down into the embedded clay. Now I'm going to remove the nonstick sheet because I want it to stick to my work surface. And it can be plexiglass like this, it can be a ceramic tile, uh, but you want something the clay is going to adhere to. We're going to turn it back over and we're going to press, press, press very firmly, doing that happy finger dance again. Now, when you do this at home, I'm going to show you something, I'm not going to do it long. You're going to roll the stamp backwards and fold it. Be very aggressive about folding it. You just don't want it in a curl. You want to actually fold it. That's not going to hurt the stamp either. And when you expose the base layer, which should be bigger than the area you're trying to remove, press that down against your work surface. Make sure it stays right where you want it. Now, when I'm at home, this is what it looks like. I am bent way down over as I walk my stamp off. The reason is, when you're walking the stamp off, sometimes little bits of clay don't want to come out. So if you do this slowly and continue to press down with pressure, all I have to do if I see those bits still sticking in my stamp is go back and give a little extra pressure on the stamp itself while I'm holding it with my other hand and those will lay right back down in place. Sometimes you have to repeat that once or twice, especially for those little bits. There's another little bit. Now let's say you miss that. You can always embellish over the top of it. You can put a crystal. You can put uh, a, a, a finding like a, a bead spacer. Anything that covers any boo-boos or flaws you're not happy with. And you just keep walking it off until the whole piece comes out. Now, I learned this the hard way. Sometimes those pieces, even though you think you press them together, aren't really touching very firmly and they may fall off after baking. So very lightly with your hand, or you can do it through your nonstick paper, just lightly tap, 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 and make sure that those two layers of clay are making contact. And this technique is just especially fun because it's so dimensional and it's so striking. So I'm holding my blade at an angle and shimming this up so I have my sheet ready to cover. Now let's talk real quick about color because this is really the most fun thing about clay is playing with color. So you can see here the finished piece that I did. 
I did it with black. I embedded black into my stamp, and I'm actually just going to bring it down here and bring it over on camera. I embedded black into my stamp um, and used white as my substrate layer or the base layer. Look what happens, the same two colors, just by flipping them, how it changes the tonality by just varying your contrast. Isn't that cool? Now, I, I think sometimes monochromatic effects are underrated. I'll put this one back. So sometimes um, that's what I do, but those of you who like a little more color, I'm just going to show you a real quick way that you can work with multiple colors. So here I'm taking a different stamp. This is my Victorian lace stamp. So when you want to do multiple colors, it's a little bit more time consuming and slightly more tricky, but don't let that intimidate you. It's not really that hard. Start with your lightest color. You lay it down in all the cavities you want that light color to be. Then you move on to your next darkest color. So in this case, I'm just using the true yellow and the true magenta. When you've got the area filled that you like, make sure that you use the clay to tamp out any of the color that you don't want. Now when you go to your next color, there's something interesting happens. You're going to press it down in the area you want to embed it, and you're going to do your slicing. Now sometimes it will pick up some of the color that was adjacent to it. And I'm not going to use those pieces again because I don't want to risk laying down yellow where I want to see magenta. So I'm going to go and get a fresh piece of clay. But if you slice around your clay and you lift it up and you don't see that color on the underside, or if you have a pretty thick piece, you can fold it over even though there's a little yellow in there. I know it's not going to be seen from the front. Just make sure that color isn't seen from the front and I can use that piece maybe one or two more times. Otherwise, it goes into my scrap clay pile, and there's so many uses for scrap clay. But we're going to shave, and I'm just going to do this a couple more times, and I'm going to release this one using a third color. Really is going to make it pop. So we want to make sure this is shaved very aggressively. And I've already prepared and rolled out on the thickest setting some of the true blue clay, but I'm going to make it thinner again because I have a tin that's going to support this so it doesn't need to be terribly thick. So one more time, just for fun. And then we're going to just show you how to quickly cover a tin and a trick about how to finish it off. Now, you may have noticed that uh, one of my pieces over here, I'm going to bring this over here, has a gradient effect in the background. So if you want to know how to do that, check out the tutorial on the Skinner Blend Gradient uh, technique here at uh, Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. And you can do that in your background and add more visual interest to your work. So we know how to do the happy finger dance. We know to repeat that flipping it over. And we're going to bend and roll and check as it comes off. Now sometimes with this Victorian lace stamp, there's such tiny little detail, all those really tiny little ones may not come out, and that's okay. I'm not going to be too worried about the, the real fine details. One more little heart there. I do want that guy. Lightly tamp it down. Hold your blade at an angle and shimmy to loosen it from your work surface. Now, I have a tin here. And I'm going to trim away a little of the excess here so I know where my center is. It's a little bit easier to align it. You can use one of the circle clay cutters if you like. And a little bit of my polybonder glue. This is a high temperature cyanoacrylate or a super glue. And it's the only glue that's designed to be safe to bake with polymer clay. So it doesn't have to cover every little bit of the metal. Just most of it's good enough. And we're going to lay this down right on top. Let that bond for a few seconds. That's all it takes. I'm going to flip my tin over and use my craft knife to trim around it. And if I need to do a little extra trimming, I can do that when I flip it over. But look how pretty that is. Now, I'm going to bake that for about 5 minutes or up to 10 minutes um, at 230 degrees, which is the recommended temperature for female professional. When it comes out, I can then go and do a decorative border edge. So 
To do that, you can just take your clay. I'll take a little black clay here. And even though I have texture in here, it doesn't matter. And I would take strips of this and just open this up. See, it's been pre-baked, so there's no risk of damaging it. And with a little of the polybonder glue, just start adding strips. And this is going to be seamless, and you're not going to see that texture that I did. When I get this all covered, I'm going to trim it just a little bit. When I get this all covered all the way around, I'm then going to take some automotive protectant spray as a release agent. And you get the idea of it was all trimmed all the way around, and I'm going to spread that on there. And I'm going to select a tool from the texture tool set here, and I'm just going to stipple this whole design. And it's going to give me the look of like hammered metal. And I will do that all the way around. And the beautiful thing is I can hold it without damaging it as I continue to work. And then this will be baked as if it had never been in the oven before. Because remember that first baking was just a heat set. So it's not quite finished yet. And lastly, I'll trim this one more time before it goes in to clean up my edges. And you just want to make sure you pay attention to working around the hinges. If you forget those, you can always trim them after you bake. And voila, you have beautiful set and slice accessories. I want to thank you for joining me today and checking out my products as well as the new FEMO professional here in the studio. And be sure to visit firemountaingems.com for more tips, tutorials, and tricks and techniques in our resource center. Thank you for joining me and happy claying. Thank mm -hmm. you.